Am I the a-hole for refusing to help my friend take care of her baby after she kicked her boyfriend out? I-19 female recently got a call from my friend Jess, 23 female, begging me to run to the shop for some baby formula and other food essentials because she was so tired. I agreed. I got her some stuff and dropped it off, and offered to nurse the baby so she could have a shower and cook some pasta. She was super happy and took up my offer. This was at 4.15 and her boyfriend usually gets back from work at 5.30. Jess has her shower and food, and when it hits 5 p.m., I ask if she's going to be okay for half an hour until her boyfriend gets home. That's when she tells me she kicked him out, because he went to visit his mother whilst he had a baby and he had to ask her first. I should be clear that I don't have kids and never intend to, and so I cannot pretend to know what goes through a new parent's head, but I found that whole thing so ridiculous. I said that's so stupid of her because he clearly loves her and the baby, and he didn't do it to be a prick. Jess got mad and said I don't get it. We sat in silence for a few moments before she asked me if I could help her the next day with the baby. I said no. She got really upset and asked why. I told her she needs to beg her boyfriend to come back, since the baby is both their responsibility. And whilst I'll help out every now and then, I'm not going to become a substitute parent when the baby clearly has two loving ones. She told me to leave but then texted me a few times later that day, asking what days I was free the next week so she could get work done. I told her I love her, but she needs to get her act together and sort it out with her boyfriend. She then went to the group chat and began asking our other friends for help, and accidentally mentioned what I had said to her. And now, everyone thinks I'm a huge a-hole, and I can't help but wonder if I am. I want to be clear. Jess's only qualms are that he went to visit his parents when he had a baby, and that he didn't ask her for permission first because she was dead asleep. She admitted he's a great father who works hard to provide for the family. He's not a disinterested bum or anything. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. I'm with you here. She's majorly overreacted to something reasonable her boyfriend did, and then trying to co-opt her friends into childcare. Not the a-hole. Maybe the friends in the group chat can volunteer their time to help Jess, since they seem to think Opie's an a-hole for reasonably setting boundaries. Agreed. I wouldn't even fight whatever was said. Just reply that I'm so happy Jess has so many friends willing to step up. And see how that rolls. Opie, not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. She sounds like a control freak. And the father has the same rights as a parent as the mother. She chose to be an a-hole. Let her suffer the consequences of her actions until she comes to her senses. To be fair, if my husband just took my newborn baby out of the house without talking to me first, I would have been fuming. I would have woken up and completely freaked out. He should have waited until she was awake. Also, what if she's breastfeeding? On the other hand, I agree that ending the relationship is a bit extreme. Postpartum, I was all over the place, so I completely understand why she overreacted. As long as he gets why she was upset, there is no reason not to repair the relationship. I think Opie did right trying to steer her friend towards reconciliation. Opie is also not obliged to help. Edit, adding this note. In a comment, Opie states that the mom knew her boyfriend was out with the baby. He just swung by his parents before coming back and texted her to let her know the change in plans. It sounds like he did everything right. Not the a-hole. Her reaction was a bit... unhinged which isn't strange considering recently having a baby. Either way, I think you handled the situation very well. Absolutely, which is why I was trying to put some sense into her. If she really wants to end a relationship with her boyfriend, fine. But it just felt off to hear from her, given how head over heels she's been for him these past few months and how she's been talking about proposing. I don't want to be that person, but I assumed it was hormones and tired talking rather than her, you know. As someone who just had a baby a few weeks ago, I 100% get what you are saying. Next story. Am I the a-hole for refusing a person a plate after they showed up and invited? Everyone is mid-late 20s. My boyfriend and I have been hosting Monday night dinner parties at our apartment for about a year. It's not every week, but most. I have food allergies and it's hard to go out, so this has been a good alternative. About two months ago, an old high school friend, Layla, moved to my city with her fiancé, Lucas, and I started inviting them to our dinners. Lucas is insufferable. He will never try his food first before adding additional seasoning, which is a pet peeve of mine, but I could get over it if he ate it, but it ends up directly in the trash. He'll add a bunch of salt to an already salted dish, take one bite, and then say, ew, it's too salty. 
or dump a ton of red pepper on and then complain that it's too spicy. And on and on. It's like he deliberately ruins his plate so he can complain about it. It's probably petty, but it really got under my skin. And it bugs my boyfriend too, to toss food that would have been perfectly good without his tampering. I put up with this for five dinners, and then stopped inviting them. I've still texted and met with Layla for coffee, but I haven't extended another dinner invite. They showed up this Monday without an invite, right as we were starting dinner. Lucas sat down and started filling a plate, before my boyfriend stopped him and told him he wasn't welcome to waste more of our food. It turned into an argument, where Lucas insisted he shouldn't be forced to eat things he doesn't like. And I got angry and told him how could he be forced when he wasn't even invited. Voices got raised and eventually Layla and Lucas left but the mood was ruined for the night. Everyone who was present agreed with me, but I guess Layla either told our old friend group or posted about it because I've gotten an odd number of texts from people I haven't talked to in years, calling me an a-hole for kicking them out over my crappy cooking. It's not, so maybe I am. Not the a-hole. While you don't owe it to them, I think it might have gone over better to have talked to Layla while you were having coffee, to let her know that his behavior was insulting and wasteful, and that you wouldn't be inviting him to any more dinners if he continued. Unless you explicitly told them, you can't assume they knew it was bothering you, as reasonable and understandable as your position is. I'm sorry to hear that this happened, but I hope you have lovely dinner nights moving forward. How nice of you and your boyfriend to host this regularly. It's true she could have told her friend, but who shows up to someone's house for dinner uninvited? The rudeness is shocking. Not just to find a friend, but after five dinners, it was probably assumed. That said, some people are just that blissfully aloof or willfully ignorant. Not day whole. Make sure you respond to everyone telling them that 1. Lucas and Layla showed up unannounced and uninvited to your home for your dinner party. 2. Lucas helped himself to your dinner without asking or being invited to it and you were not planning on two extra guests, then Lucas got mad at your boyfriend when he was stopped because he was not welcome to it. 3. Lucas has behaved very rudely to first, and only five times he's been properly invited to your dinner parties, and has not been invited back since because of his inappropriate behavior and wasteful conduct. Therefore, he will not tolerate anyone's disrespect and offensive comments, especially when they do not have all the facts to properly understand the situation to support a side. You will not be discussing it any further with anyone else, other than Layla and Lucas, the only other two involved as it's no one else's business. Not the a-hole, but you should have told Layla, or she's welcome but not Lucas. Lucas was never invited. He was a plus one. Not the a-hole. The old friend group is only saying you are, because they were lied to. That was my thought as well. I wonder how the friend or her boyfriend spun it to where they were totally mistreated, and Opie kicked them out unprovoked. Next story. Am I the a-hole for telling my best friend he is lonely because his hygiene is disgusting? My 24 female best friend, 26 male of 12 years, is a great person with many desirable traits. He is educated and has a good career, but I'm really proud of him for his accomplishments. Since we were kids, I've always noticed he had really bad hygiene habits, but chalked it up to him being a teenage boy. Now that we're older, I've seen that his hygiene has not improved with age. He goes to the gym at least three times per week, but never showers more than once per week, never brushes his teeth and only does laundry when the clothes are completely stiff. I've dropped little hints like if we stay the night somewhere together, I'll ask if he packed shower supplies, and in the mornings I'll offer to leave my toothpaste out if he wants to use it. I found myself no longer inviting him places because it's embarrassing when he shows up greasy, smelly and with an inch thick of plaque on his teeth. Last month, he told me he had a crush on one of my newer friends and asked if she was single. I told him that she was, but only recently single and isn't looking for anything right now. He wouldn't take no for an answer though and decided to contact her himself to ask her out. When she declined, she lied and said she was seeing someone. Now he knew that one of us was lying to him and when he confronted me, I told him that everyone I know thinks he is disgusting because of his hygiene. They don't want to be near him, much less date him. He denied having bad hygiene and said he does shower and brush his teeth. He left and hasn't talked to me in over a month, insisting I need to apologize and set the record straight to everyone we know. I think I'm doing him a favor in the long run, and he should appreciate my honesty because he is the one who confronted me about why I lied to him about my friend. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. You're trying to help him and you're only telling him the truth. 
he needs to get a reality check and improve his hygiene. Otherwise, he can't expect people to be willingly around him, even less to want to get intimate with him. Yep, a dude with bad hygiene can be hard to share space with, much less get intimate with. Guaranteed that even if he managed to find a girl willing to try to look past it, she still would be bothered by his hygiene once in bed and eventually leave him over it. I once ran a half marathon and got passed by a guy who absolutely reeked of ball sweat from at least four feet away. I wanted to vomit, it was so bad. Like he hadn't washed his crotch or clothes in weeks. Fit, attractive guy, but his hygiene was horrific. If it was just body odor, I could understand because that can really cling to your athletic clothes, especially in the heat, but this was straight up nuclear man genitals. Not day hole. I might write a gentle note to him, apologizing for hurting his feelings, but clearly telling him that while yes, he does shower and brush his teeth, he does them so much less frequently than he should. Then tell him that other people shower daily, and always after a workout, and brush their teeth twice a day. That he is welcome to ask his physician, as a neutral third party, his slash her thoughts on it. Then I would leave it. Your friend is in denial that something's wrong, and is grasping at straws. I do shower, even though it only seems to happen in Olympic years. I don't think apologizing for what you said rather than for hurting his feelings, and pretending like you were wrong for pointing out the truth, is the way to go. Either way, it's hard to see how this friendship continues. Even just as friends, hanging out with someone greasy, smelly, and with an inch thick of plaque on his teeth doesn't seem ideal also wash their clothes after one wear for shirts and underwear. Not the a-hole. However, you say he's been like this since he was a teenager. So it's likely no one at his home talked about how he should brush his teeth every day and shower more than once a week and went to do laundry. Hey, it's considered the norm to shower daily. Wash most clothes after one to two wear and brush your teeth twice a day. It appears you don't do that, so your dating pool may be limited to those who feel the same way. If he insists that brushes his teeth daily, but you still think he doesn't due to bad breath slash tooth condition, suggest a dentist to find the root of the problem. The show Ted Lasso had a good story arc about bad breath that was actually caused by antihistamines and some solutions. If you can see plaque on the teeth, then they are not brushing daily. I used to work in dentist office, and I have a person, usually child, hold mirror while I peeled back plaque by layers. You can get fuzzy feeling teeth in a day with high sugar diet, but not layers of plaque that you see visually. Reminder, soft brush aimed at where tooth and gum meets for every tooth, plus floss. Last story, am I the a-hole for telling my neighbor to get lost after she demanded I clean her house? I am a Latina woman married to an American man. We live in a small community in Florida where most people are nice and kind to me. For context, I love cleaning. I like trying new products just for fun, and a couple of times I've offered to clean other people's houses free of charge just to help them. Among them, a widow who recently lost her husband of 50 years, a neighbor who had a baby and has a three-year-old daughter, and another neighbor who had a car accident. I go to their houses and I clean for them once or twice a week. Then a few days ago, as I was sitting on my couch, I heard someone knocking on my door. It was odd because we have a doorbell. I opened the door and this lady around 40 years old, whom I've seen just a couple of times, said, It took you a while to open the door. I looked at her like I didn't understand what she just said, and I only mumbled, Huh? She then asked me in the most entitled tone, I want to know when you are going to clean my house for free. At this point, I was trying not to laugh, and I just asked her, Why would I do that? She then proceeded to mention all the houses in the neighborhood I've cleaned, and she wanted to know why I haven't been to her house yet. She then yelled at me, yes, yelled loud enough to make my next door neighbor to come outside to see what was going on. She was yelling at me because I wasn't replying to her. I was still trying to process how on earth this woman thought she had a right to come to my house and demand that I clean her house, for free. I just said, I'm never going to clean your house. I am not the neighbor's maid. I've only helped a few people. She then demanded that I help her and at this point I had enough. So I just said, F off and I closed the door. Later that day, when my husband got home, she ran to him and told him I am a rude person and how I yelled at her. When I explained him what happened, he told me I shouldn't have talked to her like that and next time I should be nicer. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. Your husband really is, though. Is this an isolated incident or does he belittle you a lot? Yeah, he can F off too and go clean that latest house himself. 
This. I am someone who tries to see all sides before serving judgment. But my first reaction was F the neighbor. And especially F the husband for not immediately sticking up for his wife over a stranger. Shaking my head. Not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. Maybe you should tell your husband to F off too. And while you're at it, stop cleaning houses for free. You are not the help. If you keep doing that, that's all they will view you as. Meh. She stated that she loves cleaning and loves trying new products. She should be able to engage in her hobby, help people at the same time, and receive large amount of respect. It's the neighbor who needs to change, not OP. Yeah. She's making friends with three neighbors who are probably extremely grateful. They might have even offered to pay. She's a great neighbor and will probably get help in return someday if she asks. 